Okay, we're going to figure out the exact values for the trig functions when the angle is negative 210 degrees. So be sure we draw a picture and then use a special right triangle, right? So now let's go ahead and do the work. X-axis and the Y-axis and start from the positive X-axis right here. This time the angle is negative 210 degrees. That means we have to turn backwards. And keep track carefully. Okay, let's go from here to here. This is 180 degrees, right? Backwards. So technically, this is negative 180 degrees. Well, we're almost there. We just need 30 degrees more backwards, right? So we're just going to turn from here to here, 30 degrees more. So this is the 30 degrees. And now I can draw the terminal side for you guys from the origin like that, okay? And you see, um, I needed the 30 degrees. And in this case, this is in fact my reference angle as well. Let me just make it red, okay? And this time, I'm just going to squeeze in a special red triangle right here. So let's draw the red triangle like this, okay? And we are going to use the 30, 60, and the uh, 90 special red triangle, of course. Okay, do it carefully though. So this is the right angle. All right, so this is the 30 degree angle, right? That means this is the shortest side. This is going to be one. This right here is the, uh, the longer leg. This right here is square root of three. You have to remember the ratio of the sides really, really well. And in this case, the square root of three is to the left. So it has negative x value. So be sure you write this as x equals to negative square root of three. The one was good because y is equal to one plus the one. And for the hypotenuse, which is the r, in this case is two. And the r is always positive. All right, so this is the picture that we are going to come up with. And after that, we can just go ahead and do the usual business, right? So once again, in this case, x is negative square root of 3, y is equal to positive 1, and r, which is always positive, is 2. All right, for sine, it's going to be y over r, so we have 1 over 2. And then for cosecant, it's just going to be 2 over 1, which is just 2. All right, for cosine, it will be x over r, so in this case it's negative square root of 3 over 2. And for secant, it's just going to be the reciprocal of that, which is 2 over negative square root of 3. And now let's just go ahead, uh, rationalize the denominator. At the end, you see, we will have negative 2 square root of 3 over a regular 3. Okay, tangent is going to be y over x we have 1 over negative square root of 3. And let's go ahead, do this, right? And you see we'll end up negative square root of 3 over 3. Negative square root of 3 over 3. The last one, cotangent, is just going to be this over that. Negative square root of 3 over 1, which is just the same as negative square root of 3. And that's it. Once again, the picture is very, very important.